Welcome to TCI. TCI, the first hundred years. TCI, or Technical Career Institutes, is widely respected as one of the premier two-year colleges in the nation. How this came about is a uniquely American story. In 1906, two very different men met in New York City. One was Marchese Guglielmo Marconi, a wealthy young Italian aristocrat and scientist. The other was 15-year-old David Sarnoff, a penniless Jewish immigrant from Russia and office boy to Marconi in his American company, Marconi Wireless Company of America. The two were able to quickly forge a common bond, and they became lifelong friends. Both were visionaries who believed in the power of technology to better humanity. Marconi was so impressed by Sarnoff's natural intelligence that he quickly promoted him to higher position. In 1909, Guglielmo Marconi shared the Nobel Prize for Physics for his revolutionary development of wireless technology. His innovations had the potential to draw the world together as never before. But they had to be taught to enough people to be utilized. To meet the demand for trained personnel in America, also in 1909, Marconi established a school, which became known as the Marconi Institute. This was the origin of what we know now as TCI. The school had a humble beginning, first meeting in a penthouse room at 42 Broadway in Manhattan. It was later more solidly established at 29 Cliff Street and other locations. By 1912, Marconi's technology was in widespread use throughout the U.S., and David Sarnoff was one of its most expert practitioners. Sarnoff's official biography records that on April 14, 1912, he was a wireless operator on the roof of Wanamaker's department store in New York when he received the message that the Titanic was sinking. The British-designed luxury liner was on her maiden voyage in the North Atlantic. Sarnoff remained at his post for many hours, relaying the dramatic details of what was the worst maritime disaster in history and the rescue efforts. In 1912, Sarnoff started teaching at the Marconi Institute. World War I engulfed the U.S. in 1917 and transformed the Marconi Institute. The U.S. Navy took over Marconi's American company's activities. This included the school, which now primarily emphasized the training of wireless operators and technicians for the armed forces and the police. After the war, young Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and many others in government, concluded that national security required American ownership of the Marconi Company's U.S. assets, including the school. If ownership was not transferred to American citizens, the government was going to close down all of Marconi's American businesses. To satisfy those concerns, the Radio Corporation of America, RCA, was founded in 1919 to take over Marconi's U.S. business. This included the school, which was renamed the RCA Institutes. Under David Sarnoff's guidance, RCA became one of the greatest electronic companies in the world. It developed many new technologies, including pioneering in TV broadcasting by founding NBC, constructing new generations of computers, and becoming extremely active in the exploration of space. For over half a century, the school, as part of RCA, was one of the greatest institutions of technical training in the country. RCA Institute's credits were accepted by major American universities. Many of its graduates were hired by RCA and other major companies. Others went on to get higher degrees at prestigious schools. Dr. Asad M. Modney, 2004 Alumnus of the Year. David Sarnoff constantly continued to promote and protect the interests of RCA Institutes and its graduates. The school gave many working class people, veterans and immigrants, opportunities they would not otherwise have had. Thousands were helped to realize the promise of America as a result of their studies at RCA Institutes. In return, they gave much back to the country. Louis Zanoni, a Navy veteran, was one such citizen. After graduating in 1957, he worked for RCA Laboratories and became the co-inventor of the liquid crystal display, otherwise known as the LCD, which still has many commercial and electronic applications, generating hundreds of millions of dollars for industry. The RCA Institute in New York City changed my life, changed my career, and um, it was the best choice I've ever made. Dr. Asad Madni graduated from the school in 1968 and went on to receive a Ph.D. in electrical engineering. 
He pioneered in the development of intelligent microsensors and systems for military and civilian use. Dr. Modney's work was also applied in the Hubble Space Telescope technology and the revolutionary gyro chip technology used worldwide for rollover protection in passenger vehicles, thus saving many lives. Recently, Dr. Modney renewed his ties with the school and holds the title of Distinguished College Professor at TCI. I think the fundamentals that I received at RC Institutes was basically the fulcrum and the building block on which I was able to not only uh, cope with higher education, but really to excel in the field of electrical engineering. After David Sarnoff died in 1971, RCA wanted to close the RCA Institutes. Protests from students, teachers, and community leaders saved the school. It was too important in the educational life of New York City to be allowed to die. In 1974, it was reorganized under the ownership of 30 teachers and renamed Technical Career Institutes, or TCI. Today, TCI is booming with a multitude of programs to prepare students for 21st century technology and job opportunities. Recent graduates continue to acknowledge the worth of a TCI education. I think that this school has so much potential and there's so much um, ability here for students to learn and develop and become the people they want to be. Um, it's just amazing to watch that transformation happen. My name is Sergeant Marquise Dawkins. I attend in TCI. I'm grateful of that computer skills that I was able to carry from TCI into our great army. Current students are confident that the school will help them prepare to achieve their goals. TCI has had a lot of opportunities for me right now. It also has given me the opportunity to be able to help students. I like the school a lot. I enjoy it. Teachers are very helpful. DMA is a good major. Under new ownership, the school looks forward to its second hundred years, helping to realize the promise of America. What's so exciting is the next hundred years can be just as good, if not better, than the first hundred years. We have the intelligence of faculty and the capabilities of our programs to look at what the new technologies are happening in this century, what the exploding new technology is going to occur in this century, and to be at the forefront of that education. When I was a young boy, my father said to me that the person that knows how will most likely have a job. But the person that knows why, the person that knows why will be their boss.